Hey guys, welcome back to Atypical Life. My name is April and today's video is on the topic of laundry. So I mentioned a while back that I would like to start doing some like Q&A type videos. So feel free to put any questions that you have in the comment section and they might get answered. Also, I am planning on starting a Facebook group and um, I don't have a name for it yet. When I get it started, I'll put it in the bottom of this video. So if you're interested in that, check out in the description of the video because that would be a really nice place to have some community and um, you can do some Q&A there. That is actually where I got this question from. It was asked on Facebook and I'm gonna look it up so that I can read you the question. It's a little bit long, but I think it'll resonate with a lot of us. I'm going to show you the picture and it says, okay, everyone, I really wanted to share this photo of my cluttered mountain of dirty laundry with you all, but it's truly embarrassing. This is the end of my hallway. I don't know how to get out of this situation. I've never been good at keeping up with laundry. My husband has always done his own, thank God. And the part that takes so long for me is that I have to spray so much stuff with shout due to the stains on things. We have four kids. Also, once it's clean, it's like I have nowhere to put it. There's no rooms in closets or dressers. And immediately after reading this, I sympathized um, because I, I understand. I understand what it feels like to be overwhelmed. And first off, I want to say that you're not alone. You are one of millions, probably, I don't know, part of the billions of people who struggle with keeping up with their laundry. And no judgment here. No judgment. And really, the way our house looks and all of these other kind of superficial things are just that. They're superficial. The real problem is that it seems to be causing you and your family discomfort and is probably leading you, and also, is probably leading you to overbuy clothes because you're reaching for something and you don't have it, so you think you need it, and it's not where it needs to be. So you're like, oh, well, I must need this. And then that leads you to kind of rebuy things that you already have. And that leads me to my very first impression is that you actually might have too many clothes already. And, you know, I can't, I say all of this with a disclaimer, okay? I'm just addressing what my first impressions would be for the majority of people. And so I say this because if you're able to have this many clothes in a pile and be so far behind on laundry and your drawers and closets are so full, then one, you probably have more clothes than fit in your drawers and closets, and that's definitely a clutter maker. And then two, you probably have plenty to wear, so that's, so you're losing your motivation to do laundry. The truth is about 50% of my motivation to do laundry comes from needing to do laundry. So 50% of my want to do laundry is just a habit. Every, I have the habit of doing laundry every week. I do it to completion. That means fold, put everything away one time. Okay, but then the other part of that is that like if I don't do laundry, somebody's going to run out of things. Certain items, um, we have probably, if I don't do it every other week, somebody's running out of stuff, okay? My family's not as large as yours, so every other week for you is way too long to go because you just have so many people and that's going to get overwhelming. It needs to, if you could get in the habit of doing your laundry one time to completion every week, but let's let's go for let's go further than that. My actual first impression, the very first thought that I had, was that you have too many clothes. And so I don't know how much time you have in a day. I don't know if you're a stay-at-home mom. I don't know how many kids you're taking care of during the day. I don't know if you're working. But the very first thing I would would recommend would be to get in there and start decluttering ASAP. And so if you're not familiar with what to do there, just get a box, a trash bag, something that you can sort, donate, sell, hand-me-downs, trash, whatever other categories you think that you might be sorting into, or don't even worry about that and just get started and then pick it up on the back end. But doing a little prep work does help not make a huge mess because that's another really big thing. Just don't, don't do a whole day at one time and think you're going to get it all done because you're not. So... Put your sorting boxes somewhere. It can be right in the middle of the floor if needed, okay? Because this is a temporary thing. And if you would just commit to 15 to 30 minutes per day until you're done, and by done, I mean that all of your clothing fits in the closet and the drawers when they're clean. Okay, now we're gonna get into a little more details. Sometimes there really are houses that really don't have enough space or there are situations where you just don't have the right furniture, you don't have enough storage to accommodate. And in those situations, I think that you really need to work on some storage solutions for the long term. 
you might need to come up with some ideas for seasonal storage bins. Maybe you have room under the bed. Maybe you have an attic or a basement that you can rotate things in and out of. But this is really another topic and it um, can get complicated. So if you would just focus right now on what is actually fitting into your closets and declutter to that point the best that you can, and then you can start to brainstorm ideas for storage as you see what types of items you need homes for. I would also like to know, um, if this were an in-person kind of consultation, I would also really like to know how old are your kids? If they are about four or older without any special needs, they should be able to start, four is about the age where they can start to help. Uh, maybe even before that, but th the beginning things that kids can really help with is they can sort by color, they can match socks, maybe they can't fold them together, um, but they can match them. They can sort, the sorting I think is the big thing, they can sort underwear, they might even be able to put whose clothes are whose. So that's like the first thing that kids can do, and then as they get older they can actually fold, you know. I would think a seven or eight year old could probably start folding or hanging, um, maybe even younger than that really. Another thing that kids can do is they can also help declutter. And I really like when my son helps me declutter things. Sometimes I'll do it with him, sometimes without him. But the times that I do it with him, it's really insightful and I learn a lot. I get his opinion and it helps me sometimes in my decision making because I'm like, oh, he's going to want to keep this or oh, I'm feeling sentimental about this. So it really helps like clarify what's my opinion and what's his opinion. And then that can make it easier so they also help declutter and in my opinion decluttering together is just kind of an important part of family togetherness coping development it, it just creates a line of communication and you're teaching your children something very very valuable when you declutter I always preface the decluttering situation with reminding that I'm the adult and or that you're the adult and that sometimes you know as an adult we're more aware of why and when and that be, you might need certain items also presumably we buy the items so we know how expensive they are to replace um, but then I, I'm like okay that's the preface but I would also like to have your opinion and I'd like to have your input on the clothing what are you enjoying wearing what clothing are you not enjoying wearing um, what do you think you have too many of is there any of it that you just really, really, really love? Um, are there styles that you love? And this is a good learning experience. You get to like really get in touch with your kid and what feels good to them. And, and they really like and they feel validated when you take the time and listen to their opinion. And that's why I say preface it with I'm the adult and I have to make certain decisions based on other factors, but I do want your opinion. This is also a really good time while you have them with you to let them try things on. Let them put on those things that are way, way, way too small. If they're throwing a fit, have them put it on, okay? If they're really attached to that shirt they loved two years ago, let them put it on. Let them even wear it around the house for a little bit so they can get like really uncomfortable in it and be like, yeah, I guess I need to get rid of this. Um, but this is a really good time to talk about passing on things to other kids so that they can get the same joy that you did from it. And I'm going to go on another kind of side note from here. I feel like I'm two side notes deep. But this concept really hits home if you ever buy things secondhand, like toys that they love. So you can give them an example of how someone else passed along something and how they're getting the enjoyment of it now. And that that kid probably really loved that thing, but they outgrew it and then they passed it on and now you're enjoying it. And I think that like, it was kind of an unintended consequence of buying things secondhand was like that learning lesson of see how we pass things on to each other and we share and it's not just about me, me, me. It's about sharing the experiences. Um, like I said, let them know ahead of time that you're going to get the final say. That makes it a little bit easier to stomach when you're like, no, but we have to keep this thing um, if you let them know in advance, okay? Also, though, I think it's really important as well if you can make some exceptions to your thoughts and your opinions to let them make the actual final decisions but let them get the final say on some things so that'll help strengthen their not only their decluttering muscle but their confidence and also that confidence in you that you're listening it's, it's like a bonding experience I mean it's a good time to build trust and rapport with your kid okay let's get back to laundry um, who knew laundry could be so deep right so while you're committing to this 15 to 30 minute declutter every day if you can, because this is something that you're going to need to get done and the longer you drag it out, the more stressful it's going to be on you. But you should also commit to doing one load of laundry per day to completion 
until your kids are old enough to do it. Okay, when they're old enough to do it, pass that chore on. I grew up in a family, um, it was a step family, but I grew up in a family of six, and you better believe at about 10, 11, we were doing our own laundry. Especially we were um, all in sports, so we had uniforms that had to be washed a certain time. We were responsible for all that, okay? And it's important. Like, just pass that responsibility on to your kids. Because it's theirs. It's Ultimately, it's their responsibility. But anyways, so if you can commit to that daily schedule, it really becomes part of just your routine, something that you barely think about. It's just a habit. Let's make an example. Say you get off work, you throw a load of laundry in the washer, cook dinner. After dinner, you put the um, laundry in the dryer. Done. Um, for the day, anyways. And then the next day, you get home, you fold yesterday's laundry and put it away. Put something in the washer, fold yesterday's laundry, put it away, and then you throw today's laundry in the dryer. That's just, a, that's an example. That's not my example. I have my own. But one thing, I do laundry by color. I noticed in this photo that there was some already some baskets there, but you have kind of this nice space in the hallway. Get you some tall baskets, maybe that would all fit there. Or just use the ones you have and at least try to sort darks, lights, towels. If you can sort darks, lights, maybe you have a place in the bathroom for the towel sorting. Or maybe everybody just used their same towel all week. We, that's how we do it. We have a place where we hang towels. We use our towels for a few days. For me, if I have it sorted, darks, lights, towels, I can just grab the darks, throw them in the washer, make sure they're all darks, and wash that load for that day. I say every day because it's inevitable that there are going to be days that don't make sense to do laundry. But with four kids, you're probably going to need to do at least at least five loads a week, I would say, and a load of towels. I mean, I guess it depends on how big your kids are or what, you know, um, how, how many outfits they're wearing a day. But even if you said Mondays are darks, Tuesdays are lights, Wednesdays are towels, Mondays are, or Thursdays are darks, Fridays are lights, you will be caught up and then you have your weekend. This is doable if you do one load every day. So if you would just start, here's another example. So start the load before something that takes about an hour, pop them in the dryer, and then they could stay in the dryer until whenever, until whenever. As long as they are dry, they're not going to start to stink. Um, they will get wrinkled, so you might need to do a five minute little wrinkle release dry before you're ready to fold and hang. If you have more time, obviously get them out of the dryer and hang them up before they get wrinkled. It'll save you an extra step. Make this habit for every single day. Make the commitment to at least occasionally bring your kids along to help. I know sometimes bringing the kids along just actually makes things take longer, but try to bring them along like once a week, um, or at least one of them, so they can help and they can also be learning so that they can start to get faster at stuff. Another cool thing is that if you don't try to do it all in one day, um, you aren't trying to fit everything clean all at once in the closet. So you're sort of rotating and that frees up a little extra space um, you don't need quite as much space as you would if you're putting every single item in at one time. I would say that's a little bit of a cheat, um, but, you know, sometimes we need those little cheats. One other thing I wanted to mention is the shout. So, I always keep a bottle of shout hanging. I keep two bottles of shout. One is hanging by the laundry basket and one is hanging in the laundry room. They're in separate places for me. So, the, that makes sense. If I know something has a stain on it, I'll spray it, throw it in the laundry basket. If I find something has a stain on it after I'm pulling it out of the dryer, I'll spray it and throw it in the laundry basket. It sits in there for days. It doesn't need, my, hus my husband was really stressed about that. I'm like, look, I've been doing my laundry like this for like years. I just throw the shout on it, throw it in the basket. I've never ruined anything that way at all. I've never had anything smell from it. Um, I just kind of fold up the shout on itself and then throw it in the basket. Obviously, if you have like a red and white sweater, you might want to be more... <laughs> more conscious of what you're folding on each other so you don't get any bleeding but I've literally never had anything have a problem in that way then the next time I do laundry I just throw it in the washer that way you're not sitting there waiting on it to work or skip that item until next time if you're doing laundry every other if you're doing laundry once a week and you skip the item for the week it's not going to be that big of a deal that would be my suggestion for this Q&A um that would be my A for this Q Obviously, there are unknown factors that would have an impact on my answers, but one of my favorite things to remember is when I'm overwhelmed, just one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, one step forward, next step forward, next step forward, next step forward. It basically just means that you don't have to have it all figured out today. It won't ever all be figured out until you start. It just won't. 
And so you just get started and then you say, this isn't working for me. What can I do different? How can I make this work for me? And that's the only, you never know until you start. You just have to start and then see what works and what doesn't. That's all I have for today. Um, thank you guys for hanging out. Let me know, obviously, like I said, if you have any Q&A for me down in the comments. Um, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and also check out and keep an eye out for that Facebook group that I'm getting started. My name is Ruby Rouge on Facebook. I can't really change it to anything else. That's just what it is, and I will see you guys again soon. Bye!